Brenda. <laughs> Lord. Celery, onions, carrots. What are we expecting, Gandhi? No, you used to call me mom. You used to mother me. Oh, is all this for tomorrow night? I thought we were doing yakisoba. Salad's good for you. Someone should tell you. Ugh. I'll be out of here soon. Eric's picking me up at seven. He must be stronger than he looks. <laughs> Brenda, we're gonna be having a new hospice lodger probably this week sometime. Oh, Don, honey, you know how I feel about this. You know this hospice service thing makes me nervous. You work with sick people all day long. I don't understand why you feel this need to bring them into our home. I brought you into my home. I'm your mother. You did what you ought to, were you Chinese? <laughs> you should realize that you're putting yourself, us, at risk. Uh, you've got ill patients in your guest room. Heaven knows what you could catch. You know me, I never catch anything. Honey, I'm telling you, this could still be very dangerous. My house, my rules, Brenda. I could have hepatitis, pneumonia, anemia, bed bugs. Mom, I'm not going to catch hepatitis or anemia or pneumonia, okay? He's coming in and that's final. He says his name is Dan. He says his name is Dan? Yeah. No, well, we've developed a relationship of sorts. Then we talk, I tell him my problems, he tells me stories. You know, I feed him, I'll feed him now and then. Mom, this is different from the others I've hospiced. It took forever to convince him to accept this help. Now, I don't know why, pride, maybe? And he needs the help now. I promise, this will be just like before. I'll provide all the care, whatever medicines are needed, I'll do everything. You won't even see him. You don't even have to know he's here. It's just that I worry for you. Look, I know what you're doing is right. Only... Only you wish it were someone else doing it. Mom, you've said it yourself. It can't always be someone else. Well, I need to be getting ready for Eric. Here. Vegetable soup for the whole block. Weekends do not include Friday, Robert. You can pick her up at 6 a.m. on Saturday, not on Friday. I suppose. She wants to see what? Zombie Nightmare 3. So there was a 1 and a 2? She is 12 years old. I, I was not seeing dismemberment until I was 13. Remember, home before bedtime, 10 p.m. No, Robert, that's my bedtime. And she eats her greens, otherwise no college tuition. Am I interrupting anything? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Goodbye, Robert. I came by to chat. Come on in. Well, I'm glad that Lucille is improving, but yeah. I'm a little concerned about you. I mean, at work you look like you haven't slept since Prohibition, and at home you look even worse. Mm. I took in another hospice yesterday. It's Dan, the transient that I was telling you about. You know? Yeah, yeah, he used to stay on the corner. You used to visit him on your lunch hour. Yeah, well, his health is declining, and I could not think of a better way to help him out. He's got a bronchial occlusion, so as soon as I get him antibiotics for that, I'm going to try to get him into a clinic. Is that going to be a problem? Is he afraid of doctors? <laughs> Not that I blame him. Yeah, Terry, I don't know, but he is afraid of something. Dawn, you can't help him if you fall sick. At the very least, you need to get more sleep. Are you pulling rank on me? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they pay head nurses to do. Well, that and to terrorize the interns. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go take a little cat nap? I'll hold shift and you go restore some of your youth. Oh, you are always looking out for me. 
Have a nose. Somebody has to. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I can't help worrying about her, Eric, <laughs> even if she is over 40. She's reckless, careless, and she thinks she's immune to everything. But am I, you know, I worked very hard for a very long time. And I don't want to spend my retirement in an iron lung. <laughs> I don't think they make them anymore. Those oxygen tents don't seem so bad. You don't still smoke, do you? I've tried talking to her. She just won't listen. Have you tried beating some sense into her? <laughs> I can't. She's my landlord. And you said you haven't ever even seen this new lodger? I want nothing to do with him. Who knows what contagion this man carries? And Don doesn't even seem to care. Who knows what I could catch? Well, your daughter's a nurse. She's bound to have access to sedatives. For Dan? No, for you. Whose side are you on, anyway? <laughs> I do let you buy my dinner, you know. She hardly ever dates anymore. She's letting her work swallow her whole. Like Jonah and the Leviathan. That's just a metaphor. A metaphor for what? For God? Is the Leviathan God? And if it is, wouldn't you want it to swallow you whole? She needs to start dating again. <laughs> oh, she won't hear that from me, but... Oh, I know she's capable, but just because you're independent, that doesn't mean you have to do it alone. Her biological clock is ticking. She is over 40. If she were a Neanderthal, she'd be dead by now. <laughs> if she were a Neanderthal, that clock would be terrifying. <laughs> Sometimes... I think she just wants to help everyone. Everyone but herself. You know what they say, where charity begins. I don't understand why she just insists on bringing it home. Oh, is that Terry leaving Who? the house? Oh, uh, Don's supervisor. Huh. Well, I've never seen her before. Well, <laughs> I know that. Your clothes are in the wash. How's the gown fit? I feel like a little girl in it. Oh, it's just until I can get you some new PJs. You know, I bought you some new men's toiletries too, but something tells me that you're not going to be needing the razor. <laughs> Thanks. I, I really love my beard. <laughs> You know, I told you that I wouldn't ask you about your past if you didn't want to really tell me. Really much to tell. I went to school, got married, served in the military. Sometimes, I think that's really all I can clearly remember. The draft was still on back then, and my unit deployed in the last year of the war. <sighs> Later, when, when I fell off the rails, Nearly didn't see that coming. Could happen to anybody. It took nothing to put me where I am. You know, if my interest seems too personal, I... No, you're, you've taken me in. I really don't mind telling you my history. <sighs> Moved around different states. Worked a few odd jobs here or there. Uh, finally, ended up here. So what about you? <coughs> Why did you choose to go into nursing? I always knew I wanted to go into medicine. I wanted to specialize, but it was just Brenda and I, so 
There wasn't the extra income for further medical school. Oh, why was that? I've been nursing 12 years. You know, there was a time when I thought that interim care was unimportant. I couldn't have been more wrong. You could still become a specialist. You know, they say that you choose either medicine or money. And they obviously didn't read Albert Schweitzer. I never knew he wrote anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. He wrote a great deal. Um, uh, literature, medicine, even music. You music fan? I like the old guard. Dylan, the Beatles, the early Stones, the 60s Bee Gees, before disco. I could not stand disco. <laughs> what about you? I don't listen to music that often. Why steals your soul from you? Music helps you find its way back. I'm coughing less now. Yeah, that's the antibiotics kicking in. You know, I want you to know I really appreciate everything you've done for me. <sighs> Too many people in my world have been hurtful. Probably out of fear. Sometimes I think mankind is a misnomer. Mm. Have you thought any more about letting me sign you into a clinic? And you still won't let me do an exam? Not even for cis or... No? Oh. All right, fine. I'm sorry, I'm so much trouble. Oh, no, no, no. It's getting late anyway, and I've got some prep work for the morning, so we can talk more later. It's only natural, Don. He's, he's indigent. He's ill. He's so vulnerable. Yeah. I mean, in his position, self-protection is top priority. Yeah, but he knows I'm trying to help. And he won't allow any kind of exam. Yeah, you know, he is adamant about not meeting Brenda. <laughs> but she doesn't want to meet him either. So what can you determine visually about his condition? Well, his skin is pale and nails are discolored. And his eyes are really light sensitive, so all long-term signs of anemia. And I'm certain that his condition has degraded in the time I've known him. And I just, I can't really explain it, Terry, but I just feel more invested in him somehow. Well, you've come to know him. It's only natural. And his condition seems stable, but I can't be confident that he's being honest about his symptoms. Terry, he fusses when I take his temperature. Orally, I assume. Oh. <laughs> so, any signs of alcohol poisoning? Oh, no. None that I've seen. And how are you holding up? I'm on the fence, as always. Brenda wants him out. And I just, I don't know how long he's going to agree to stay. Well, you know our patients. Other than being sick, they are perfectly healthy. Oh, right. <laughs> he served. Maybe you should suggest a VA hospital or... I just think that if he were open to that, he would have already gone. Okay. So, talk to him as a friend. Your trust will go a long way. He's trying to stay distant. If you are too, you're never going to reach him. I would like both on my pie. You have to choose. Either ice cream or whipped cream. You can't have both. Mmm, just whipped cream on Dan, because he may have sensitive teeth. Brenda, would you mind taking it up to him? Why can't I have both? Would I have to wear a surgical mask? I'm serious, Don. We don't know what he may have. Just because you think he doesn't look sick. Why, well, he could be a carrier, couldn't he? Well, then I'll tie a message to his life. I'll take it into him. Yeah, you could at least introduce yourself. Never mind. You know, Eric seems like he's a nice man. He's timid. Doesn't he strike you as timid? I think life is easy for him. Hmm. You know, after our third date, when he got to second base... Mom! I do not want to know about second base. I don't even want to imagine the stadium. You. 
No, but Eric seems like he's a nice man. And if he's a good guy, lucky you, because he can bake a pie. Hey, I worked the oven, didn't I? <laughs> Dan's a nice guy. A little timid, maybe. So what the two of you talk about? What guys always talk about. Sports, politics, women. <laughs> you weren't even in there five minutes. <laughs> yeah, and I told him all that I know. <laughs> and he said he's actually feeling better. And he owes it to you. Oh, well, wait till he gets the bell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's my whipped cream? Thanks for dinner, Dawn. Such a good dessert. Apple pie, boy, well, it's been a long time. Hey, I worked hard on that pie, too. Watching my mom and her boyfriend bake it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he's her boyfriend. It's early yet. May I ask, if you don't mind, is there someone special in your life? There was, once, some time ago. We just wanted different things out of life. My mom, she wants me to marry one of the surgeons at the hospital, but she obviously hasn't met any of them. Although, a plastic surgeon could prove useful. You know, well... <coughs> <laughs> this ain't going away, is it? Dan, you really need proper care, and I'm, I'm limited to what I can do here for you. I mean, you should be getting better, to be honest, you're not. Well... If it does work out that way, I will go into a clinic. And hopefully, you can come with me. Oh, of course I will, Dan. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, what are you reading? A History of Patagonia. Patagonia? <laughs> well, when you're over 50, you start to realize how much you've missed of the world around you. <laughs> over 40 for some of us. <laughs> so, I've had a long talk with Dan about his recovery, and I think you're going to be happy to hear that he's going to be leaving tomorrow. And he went ahead and agreed to go into the Morningside Clinic as long as I sponsored him. So, I'll be home early tomorrow to help him get settled in. I think this is the best thing for all of us. He'll get the proper treatment he needs and we'll be able to get our own lives back to normal. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to kind of miss him after he leaves. I just feel like we finally developed a real connection. You know, Dawn, all of these people that you help are going to vanish from your life. That'll just... Make room for more to come in. <laughs> Dan will never forget what you did to help him. He may even find a way to thank you. Honey, you took the time to really see him when nobody else would. I don't think this is goodbye. I'm sure of it. I know I said four, but the traffic was conspiring against me. Where's Eric? I didn't see his car out front. Oh, he's gone off to get me some kind of surprise or something. I made the mistake of telling him I love surprises, so he jumps up and says, oh, I've got just the thing. <laughs> Mom, you could treat him better. Why? Well, I treat him the same way as I do you. Well, Morningside stays open till 6 p.m., so there's no real rush. You checked? Did Eric say when he was going to be back? Well, I got the impression it would be soon. Okay. Well, I'm going to let Dan know I'm home and that he needs to start getting ready.
Dan. You asleep? Hey, it's about time we get ready to go. Dan. 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 Oh my God. Medical emergency? Yeah, we need an ambulance at 44 Miller Crossing. Yeah, patient is 60, non-responsive. Likely for pneumonia. Yeah, could you please hurry? Okay. Mom, get in here quick! Mom! Here. Yeah, can you hear me? It's gone. Yeah. Hey. Oh, God. Are you okay? You're gonna be all right. Dog? Yeah. I thought I heard you. Gosh, just stay, stay laying still, okay? Just take it easy. Okay. Honey, what is it? What? Oh my God. Mom, what is it? He's your father. What? What do you mean he's my father? Hey, uh, Brenda. Where is he? It's you, isn't it? I'm so sorry. Please believe me. Both of you. How could you? How could you? I was a ruined piece of nature. My memory was failing. My nerves were shot. I drank. I was no use to anyone. I couldn't be who I once was. I thought I could make it back. But I never could. So you just abandoned us. You just let your daughter grow up without a father. You're better off without me. But you made it. You did. You know what? Now's not the time for that da damn. I got paramedics. They should be here soon, okay? So, Dawn, what do you want to ask your father? <laughs> is the tightness that you're having up in your throat or is it lower down in your chest? A hundred times I tried to call. Two times. I swear, I was better off in my head. I would like to have had a say in that. So why did you come back now? Are you getting sicker? Were you afraid of dying? I was bad off. I couldn't take a chance. Chance for what? Mom. I'm sorry. Damn it, it's coming. You know, so in fiction, a person who's dying always has a chance to make amends. You think that happens in real life? <laughs> 